Let us rise up and begin to bless the name of the Lord, this great God, amazing Father that brought us into this year 2021. Let us exalt him that preserved us throughout the whole of last year. Let us bless him that kept us, every one of us, every one of us, every one of us in our going out and in our coming in. The one that was with us always, who did not leave us, who did not forsake us, and who has brought us to this wonderful, blessed year. Let us give him glory for all the wonderful things he did for us in the year 2020. Even at the last minute, at the last minute, at the last minute, let us exalt him. Because he said to us he will crown the year with his goodness. And indeed, he crowned the year with his goodness. Yes. Testimonies abounded of the marvelous works of God. And many more testimonies that came in the last period of 2020 will be seen this year. Amen. Because God is the, uh, uh, is the truth. Amen. There is nothing false about him. He said he will crown the year with goodness. So I am absolutely certain that he has crowned the year with goodness for everyone. Many do not yet know it, but he has done it because he always does what he says. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a son of man that he should change his mind. He said, as he said, and will he not do? God has everything to do what he has said. He has every power, every power, every resources, every wisdom, every knowledge, every understanding, whatever he needs to do what he says, he has it. So he's not looking to someone or depending on someone to bring about what he has said. So let us glorify his name. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for bringing us into this wonderful year, a year of amazing blessing, a year of the amazing goodness of God, a year that will be going stronger and stronger for the Lord. Let us exalt him. Let us give him praise because nothing will hinder us. Nothing will hinder us. Nothing will delay us. Nothing will obstruct us. Nothing will even mess around with us. We shall be going stronger and stronger. We shall be uh, taking grounds for the Lord. And we shall see that things are getting uh, 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 clearer and clearer as we go. And we shall be taking positions. We shall be enlarging, increasing, multiplying. That is our portion this year in year 2021. Let us bless him. Let us give him glory. Let us thank him because the battle is over. Because he has come to fight for us. He has come to fight for us. The battle is over. You have no more battles to wage. You have no more war to fight. The fighter has come. The Lord of hosts has come. Let us give him praise. Let us give him glory. Let us give him honor. Let us exalt his name. Let us give him glory. The one who has said he has a controversy with the nations of the world because of you, because of you, because of his church. The controversy is because of his people. So let us bless him. Let's give him praise. Father, we are grateful to you. He said in his words that I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. God will not leave his church at the mercy of, of, of the devil. He will not leave his church at the mercy of the governments of the world. He will not leave his church at the mercy of anyone. No, he will take over and he will continue to build it because he said, I will build my church. And whatever God builds, nobody can pull down. Whatever God builds, nobody can pull down. Let us exalt him. Let us thank the Holy Spirit among us, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of truth, the spirit of power, the, the spirit of righteousness and of holiness. Let us exalt him. Father, we are grateful. We worship you, Lord God. Let us thank him because he will preserve us throughout this year, just as he did last year. No one will be missing. Every one of us will be celebrating the goodness of God. We, be, we give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us put our hands together for Jesus. Glory be to God. Please let us sit down. On the 31st of December 2020, I said to you that the Lord gave me a word for this year, and the word is controversy. Before then, beginning in September, He led me to be looking 
at certain passage, uh, passages of scripture. And the way it was happening was really amazing that I did notice at the time. Even when I want to open to other passages, the Bible will open to those passages he wants me to, to, to study. When I open the Bible like this, it will be the place. If I take it another day and I want to open the Bible like this, it will be the same place. So I had to pay attention. You remember I told you a testimony some time ago uh, when the Lord wants you to look at scripture. He does that with me. I don't know if he does that with you. Uh, there's been some kind of a track record of God, you know, making it happen that it is where he wants me to look at that way open. Praise God. And I also want to tell you that indeed on occasions when he tells me go to Susu chapter of the scripture and I want to open the Bible, it will open exactly to that place. So it's amazing. I don't know how he does this thing. I mean, you see this. I've used so many Bibles. I love Bibles. I don't even know how many of them that I have. Praise God. I keep buying and buying and buying Bible. Glory be to God. Amen. Because it's the treasure. Glory be to God. And I can't have enough of it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. So one time the Lord spoke to me. He said to study Isaiah chapter 49 as a passage of scripture for the ministry many, many years ago. So I opened Isaiah chapter 49. I studied it. I got an understanding that indeed that is, uh, you know, the, the word of God for the mission that uh, he has for me. So many months went by. One time I was going with my pastor to a hill to pray. In Nigeria, they said going to the mountain to pray. So as I was walking uh, with him, the Spirit of God told me, when I get to the place, I should open the Bible to Isaiah chapter 49 and study it. And I said, I don't need to do that. I've already studied the passage, Isaiah chapter 49, so I don't need to do that. So I made up my mind I was not going to go to Isaiah 49. I studied it. So in my mind, it's, I've studied it. So we got to the place. And as I put my Bible down like this and removed my hand, it opened to Isaiah 49. I was not intending to open to Isaiah 49. I said, oh, oh, my God. So I said, Lord, I humble myself. Forgive me. I will, you know, study it. So uh, it's to tell you some of the things that the Lord has been doing. Praise the Lord. So I kept on studying I, uh, Ezekiel, it started from Ezekiel chapter 25, Ezekiel chapter 26. I'm giving you those scriptures so that you can also study on your own. Ezekiel chapter 27, Ezekiel chapter 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. That, those are the scriptures that cover the things on the nations. Then Ezekiel chapter 33 is talking of the watchman for Israel. And Ezekiel chapter 34 spoke about the judgment of God on the leaders of Israel. And then Ezekiel chapter, you know, 35 and 36 began to prepare, you know, uh, the blessing for the people of God. And of course, you know Ezekiel chapter 37 that is where the valley of the dry bones came in. Glory be to God. Then on the 13th of November, I asked a pointed question. Lord, what do you have for us for 20, what is it about 2021? What are you saying about 2021? And that's when I had that word, controversy. Praise the Lord. In Ezekiel 25 to 32, the Lord was detailing his controversy with the nations of the world. Glory be to God. Controversy with the nations of the world. The same thing is in the book of Jeremiah. If you study Jeremiah chapter 5, 
to 8. And then Jeremiah chapter 25 actually put everything together. Jeremiah chapter 25 and then Psalm 83. Praise the Lord. So these are the things we'll be looking at uh, this year in one way or the other. But I want us to understand that when the Lord talks of controversy, he's talking of a dispute. There's a dispute. There is a dissatisfaction. And because of dissatisfaction, the time has come that God said, okay, I'm going to have to do something about it. Now, it is important for us to see that in Scripture, there are three uh, segments we can look at when we're talking of controversy. There's controversy between the people of God themselves. Amen? And this was uh, dealt with in the book of Deuteronomy when people have conflicts among themselves. And we also saw that the Lord Jesus Christ also taught on this, I believe, in Matthew chapter 18. Praise God. We will come to that. It's very, very important that we know how to handle conflicts. Why? Because if we don't handle conflicts right, we uh, risk judgment based on what God wants to do with others. So the more we are careful in what we do, with one another, the more we avoid God's judgment. Praise the Lord. I'm taking time to explain this thing so that you can know that you, you cannot be talking of God dealing with uh, our enemies and we don't see uh, areas that we can be trapped if we are not conscious. Glory be to God. The Bible does not Ignore conflict among brethren. The Bible does not say that there will be no differences. It addressed it. Praise the Lord. So as people of God, we must address whatever differences we have by biblically, according to the word of God. When we do that, then we are in the will of God. Praise the Lord. One of the ways we can avoid, you know, these things is to listen to the word of our Lord Jesus Christ when he told us, simply love one another. If we all walk in love, then that, exonerate, uh, that you know, uh, it shuts down conflict and strife. Praise God. Amen. Because the church of God cannot be built where there is strife. It cannot be built where there is conflict. It cannot grow where there is controversy. That is why he appointed leaders in the church and actually spoke to them and tell, told them that they need to look at this quickly. Praise the Lord. So let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, and it not be known who has slain him, then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth, and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, even the elders of that city, shall take an ifa, uh, which hath not been uh, wrought with, and which hath not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring down the ifa unto a rough valley, which is neither eared nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley. And the priest, the sons of the Levi, shall come near. For them the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord. 
And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. Let's read that verse again. And the priests and the sons of Levi shall come near. For them the Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord. And by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. Praise the Lord. Another version said, by their word shall every controversy, glory be to God, every controversy be settled. Amen. So the responsibility is on the elders of the church to ensure that they play the roles that they need to play so that when they see things, they should not ignore it. They should not just sweep it under the uh, carpet. You should address it in the fear of the Lord. How will they address it? Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 44. The foundation that is being laid is so important. As we go forward in the course of the year, we will see what we're saying. There can be controversy, dispute, between brothers, between sisters, in the church. Don't forget that the church is not only the place where we gather here. The first unit of the church is the home. Praise the Lord. Our homes are also churches. So there could be disputes. We must know how to settle them. Because if we don't settle them right, we risk being judged because this year is a year of judgment of everything that is standing proudly against the desires of God. So that is why we must be uh, uh, informed. We must be what? Informed. We must be informed and we must be ready to do what God wants us to do. So I'm going to read from verse 21, look at the scripture. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had, that had a priest before. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane leaders Please listen. You are in a leadership position in this church. Please listen. This is not the role of the pastor alone. Because the pastor is not the only leader in this church. And for every church that will hear this message, it is necessary that they listen. Glory be to God. Amen. So, he said... And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. In ministering to people, we must always dwell on holiness. We must dwell on righteousness. We must dwell on what is right. Praise the Lord. Amen. We must not ignore things and say it's not my responsibility. Because if the Lord brings this word to us, then it is important for us to take full advantage of the benefits that are therein. Praise the Lord. As we see things, we address them. Amen? As leaders of the church, we don't let it fester. There are things you can handle that the pastor may not have to be aware of. Once it is settled, it is settled. Glory be to God. He doesn't have to stop at the table of the pastor because then everything will be a body. If it's only if it is not settled at the level that it should be settled that he can get to the pastor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So you have responsibility. So whatever the issue, this is a year that we must really be sensitive and ensure that as much as possible, we avoid contention, disputes, uh, strife, 
arguments and things that should not be. Praise the Lord. We must walk in peace. As far as it is possible with you, the Bible says live in peace with all men. He says seek peace and pursue it. Seek peace and what? And pursue it. Glory be to God. Seek peace and pursue it. Husbands and wives, seek peace and pursue it. Glory be to God. Seek peace and pursue it. Glory be to God. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment. That is, they shall judge, they shall adjudicate, they shall intervene, they shall make peace. They will not stand aloof, they will not stand away. They will not say it's not my business and allow it to fester, to create problems. Praise the Lord. They must stand in judgment. And they shall judge it according to my judgments. According to what? That is according to the word of God. According to the principles of God. Irrespective of who is concerned. You see, this is maturity. Because if we're truly matured, then when things happen, we don't look at it in a, in a way other than the way of God. Praise the Lord. And what is wrong is wrong. What is right is right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said, and in controversy, that is in dispute, in contention, in, uh, you know, arguments, whatever. I said, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my status in all my assemblies. And they shall hallow my Sabbaths. Praise the Lord. So leaders, please appeal to you at whatever level you are, address issues. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, let me just say this. How can we avoid conflicts among ourselves? How can we avoid strife? Arguments, contentions. Number one, we have to avoid factions. We have to do what? No faction. The church of God is one. The church of God is one. There must be no faction or group or cliques. That doesn't mean you can't have your friends. But then your friends should not constitute a group that is special and then you are placing your mind against some others. It's not the way to go. Why are you hearing this word? Because God said this year he is going to have controversy with the nations because of his people and he's going to have controversy with his people. Everything that needs to be judged will be judged. So that's why we're hearing this. First of all, to take care of ourselves because we must be the first partaker before we start talking of something else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because the Lord, I wouldn't even say he's ready to fight. I will say to you, the Lord is already fighting. Are you listening to me? I should have spoken to Prop before coming here because I needed an interpretation which I forgot to ask him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God for him. Praise the Lord. One is a professor. Two, I mean, English is his language. Praise the Lord. Yeah, there is no English man that can say, what, what, what is he saying? He will teach English to the English man. That's the truth. Praise the Lord. No, that, 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 there is no, there is no, no kidding. That's it. It's a professor of English. So you want to know English, you better listen to him. Don't say it's my language. Okay. If you don't listen to him, I go and say things you shouldn't have said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Beja. Yes. Yes. Glory be to God. 
Amen. Amen. Beja, it means I will fight for you. And God didn't say that I will come. He said, I have come to fight for you. So that's why I said he's already fighting. Are you listening, people of God? We must be people that are informed. He didn't say, I will come and fight for you. He said, I have come to fight for you. So it means that the day he said it, the fight began. Amen. Amen. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Joshua, what did he say? Joshua said, are you with us or with them? He said, as the you know, angel of the Lord, have I come? Is that not so? Yes. To do what? To do battle. Was it a battle for tomorrow or was right now? Right now? Was it not a right now battle? Yes. Those of you that went through the Bible in Joshua, is it chapter 5 or chapter 6? Amen. It was right now. So the fighting already begun. That's why we have to, you see, how I conduct myself vis-a-vis -vis you is very important because God is jealous of his people. So that's the same way he's jealous. If you treat me, he's jealous. If I treat you, he's jealous. You can't say it's my wife. She's also God's daughter. And you can't say it's my husband. He's also God's son. Because some of our, you know, mothers, they say, well, you know, I mean, he, I can do it. He's God's son. He's the son of God. So you better be careful. Glory be to God. Amen. And he said it in the book of Malachi that he will be a witness in our marriage. So what we're saying, they are not, we're not just talking from our minds. We're talking scripture. Praise the Lord. Every one of us, please listen and receive this word. It's better to begin and settle this first before we go to others. Praise the Lord. So look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. How do you avoid controversies? Number one, avoid cliques. Avoid cliques. Avoid factions. Avoid groups. Praise the Lord. We are the same. We are all children of God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to, to the name of the Lord. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, look at Apostle Paul, what he said. Line must be upon line. Precept must be upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Glory be to God. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. What is going to determine whether you are mature or not is to treat everybody the same. Amen. Amen. And most importantly, to love them as you love yourself. Amen. Amen. The Bible says somebody went to Jesus Christ. Master, what is the greatest commandment? And he said to him that what was written is that thou shalt love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Praise the Lord. And he said, that is the first and the greatest commandment. But then he said, the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he said, on these two stand all the law and the prophets. So if you love the Lord God with all your heart, and you love your neighbor as yourself, you have fulfilled all the law. Praise the Lord. If you walk in love, Towards God and towards man, you have fulfilled the law. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he said, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto Cana, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. They were not able because they did not open their heart. It wasn't because they don't have the competence, but they, they refused the truth. They are fighting the truth. They, they, they block their eyes to the truth, their heart to the truth. Therefore, they are not able to receive what you know, God is saying to them. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, that's controversy at a certain level among the church. Are ye not carnal? So you are immature. You see, strife, contention in the church 
is simply pointing to the spiritual maturity of the church. Where there is strife in the church, it means the church is not mature. There is no maturity. And they are not mature because some people may not want to receive the truth that are being taught. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if there is maturity, there will be peace. That's what it means. If we are mature, there must be peace. If we are mature, there must be unity. If we are mature, there must be love. Praise the Lord. Does that mean that we don't do things that uh, we may look at as if it's not right? Yes, we do, but we will be overlooked. Why? Because of maturity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he said, for while one said, I am of Paul, these are factions now, and another, I am of Apollos. Are you not Cana? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Praise the Lord. Amen. We should not be a church that have, you know, preferences. Oh, if, who is ministering today? So, so, ah, yeah, I must be there. Who is ministering today? So, so, well, well, I'll come later. We shouldn't be like that. Amen. Amen. I am still learning. There is no one that gets up in this place to speak that I don't learn from. Glory be to God. There is no one that gets up to speak that I don't learn from. Praise the Lord. Amen. In the opening prayer, I saw another revelation from Genesis chapter 8. Glory be to God. Say, so come out of the ark. Woman was my wife that ministered. I learned. I added it. I what? Every ministration you receive increases you. So if you shut down your heart, you don't get anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have the book. God, the master builder. And he did not use me to write it. But there is no time, but I'm at gets here to minister that I don't learn from him. I, sometimes I want it. Did you see this in this book as well? Wow. There are so many things in this book. And what is really in my mind, I'm telling him now before the church, is we will probably have to edit that book and flesh it up again so that we can be a little bit more. We can add some of those things that he's saying into it. Glory be to God. Amen. It's the treasure for the church. The church owns it. Let's improve it. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So don't get clicks in place and refuse to grow. You must avoid clicks. You must avoid, you know, what you say, these are my favorites. Because the trouble is when somebody is in your group, there's nothing they can do wrong, even when they are wrong. And that's a problem. Praise the Lord. You'll be blind to their faults. You won't be able to correct them. Yes. But if you rise above cliques, then you can correct. Yes. You can say, my sister, well, I don't think you should have handled that in that way. Yes. But if it's your clique, you will say, yeah, yeah, what they did was wrong. So you are not helping issue. You, you know, listen, for us to build, we have to build together. Yes. Do you know there is no amount of people that are building. If there are people that are tearing down, it will not be built. Some people are building, but you are tearing down. Even if it's only one person, except God sends that person out of the church, it will still be a problem. So that's why all of us must build. The Lord will make us builders in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. We have no choice. This is something we cannot avoid this year. This is not something we cannot ignore because we are responsible. Because if you ignore it, I'm telling you, he is fighting for his church. And there is no way God can fight you and you can survive it. So please, please, is the consuming fire. They sang the song, Allah, but I know it's consuming fire. 
our our you know sister told us that he has this robe that is full, that is uh, has light. The robe itself is fire. That's the meaning. The robe itself is fire. So he's, he clothed himself in fire. That's, that's the thing. So let's know who we're dealing with. Pastor, you are scaring me. You better be scared. <laughs> yeah. You better be scared. Because the time of you know, messing around has gone. He taught us in 2020, he laid the foundation. By the time we go forward, you will see that he is building on the foundation that he has laid. He has prepared us. I didn't know that at the time, but I could see the connection now. Glory be to God. So you avoid factions. You avoid comparisons. Say because they compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We are not the same. We have individual competence and capabilities. So don't compare. Brother so so and so do. Why can't you do it like sister so so? How can I do it like sister so? I'm not sister so so and so. I am me. Praise the Lord. So let's handle issues without comparing. Glory be to God. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have standard. So if you want to look, we look on the basis of the standard. And what's our standard? The word of God. That's our standard. Praise the Lord. Amen. We must forgive. To avoid controversy, we must forgive. And that is important for you. If you forgive men their sins, your father in heaven will forgive you your sins. But if you do not forgive men their sins, then your father in heaven will not forgive you your sins. And if God does not forgive you, where are you? Amen. So we must forgive others. Peter asked, my brother does something against me. How many times will I forgive him? What did the Lord say? Hmm? Seventy times. Seventy times. What about you? How, how many times? Seventy times seven. Okay, they say seventy times seven. <laughs> four thousand nine hundred. That's seventy times seventy. Seven times seven is four ninety. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we the, the, it's simply saying uncountable times. It doesn't tell us to be counting. Okay, now, now you are about to run out of grace. Why? This is 469. Okay, this is this is this is 469. You are about to run out. You know, I've been very patient with you. That's not what it means. It means we must be ready to forgive all the time. Praise the Lord. We must resolve issues based on the word of God. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 21. And that's what we also read in Ezekiel chapter 44. Let the word guide, not your opinion, not your emotional situation. Each of us, when something happens to us, we can be emotional. But we must not act under emotional situation. Most of the time, pool of God, if you take any steps when you are emotional, it's always going to be wrong. Because there is no discipline. There is no control. When you have, when you're emotional, you have lost control. So you need to calm down, praise God, and sit back and then address issues later. Glory be to God. When you are emotional, words continue to fly and contention increases. Praise the Lord. When you say the last one, you say, I must reply. And when I reply, that's the last thing I say, you also must reply. So it escalates. Praise the Lord. That doesn't help anyone. 
Now, let me say this here. One of the things that uh, God has been gracious to guide me with is I look at things in this manner. Yes, this thing is wrong. Yes, it has been done. I have a right to act upon it. But how will that affect kingdom work? I never cease to look at things from that point of view. So I am prepared to let things go if I know that it will have adverse effect on the kingdom. So when you wrong me, I don't have to address it. If you hurt me, I don't, it's better for me to be hurt than for me to now do something that is going to affect kingdom work. Praise God. That was why I told you on Friday that it is better for you to be wrong than for you to wrong others. Praise the Lord. Nurse your wounds. Amen. Nurse your wounds. Be strong enough to be able to take some stuff. Be willing to accommodate. Be willing to accommodate. I'm sure there are many of us here that sometimes you have wanted to eat and then you open your mouth and then by the time you bring your teeth down, it lands on your tongue. How many people? You bite your tongue. You know it's very painful. Praise the Lord. Did you remove your teeth? Did you remove your tongue? No. What did you do? No. You accommodated the pain. <laughs> Amen. You know your wounds and you move on. You feel the pain. Yeah, of course. You feel the pain a lot. Yes. You feel the pain a lot, but you move on. And then another minute you're still engaging the two. They are in harmony again. And they're able to chew some good stuff. Glory be to God. This is the way it is. We must resolve issues very quickly. Amen. We shouldn't let it linger. Shouldn't take time. You know, multiplying it in your mind. Resolve it. Resolve it openly. Resolve it fairly. Quickly, openly, and fairly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I think I've said this before, sometimes last year. Let's resolve things quickly. Don't let it, you know, linger. Praise the Lord. Amen. Quickly doesn't mean that you will restore it in the heat of the moment. If in the heat of the moment things are still likely to be hot, calm down, but don't just, you know, let it fester and go on for days without resolving them. We're talking of how to avoid controversy among us. Glory be to God. Amen. Next, please, let us communicate clearly. Communicate clearly. If you're speaking to someone, please speak with the understanding that the person that you are speaking to must understand what you are saying. Otherwise, you have not communicated. Particularly you leaders, please speak clearly. I'm not talking of your English, please. Don't get me wrong. Amen. But sometimes you can explain something and people don't quite know or clearly what you are saying. So use other words. Explain and be sure that they actually... Uh, Receive what you are saying clearly with the understanding you have before you move away. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, if they go and do something they think that you said, which is not what you said, and then they come back to you, well, that's what you said. No, that's not what I said. Well, that's what you said. So, controversy. So, let us communicate clearly. And when we're communicating, we must always be thinking of people that are receiving what we're saying. It's not about us. To say, well, that is clear to me. Yes, is it clear to them? Communication is not complete until it is clear to the person that is receiving it. You understand what I'm saying? It has to be clear to him. If it is not clear to him or to her, you have not communicated. You have just spoken words. 
Praise the Lord. So let us communicate clearly. Let us say, and let us even ask, do you understand what I've said? You know, when I was growing up, and my father would speak to me, he will ask me, do you understand? I will say yes. He will tell me, okay, tell me what did I say? And I will repeat what he has said. And when he realizes that, yes, that is what he said, okay. That was many, many years ago. Praise the Lord. We can adopt the same thing. It doesn't mean we're talking to dummies. No, but they need to hear us, what we're saying. Because this is what will help us. Praise the Lord. We must avoid partiality. Don't treat one different from the other. God is no respecter of persons. Amen? God is no respecter of persons. So let us treat everybody in the same way. Amen? The same Lord over all is rich unto all. Why? Because there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. He didn't make a difference. Parents, please don't make a difference. This is my son. This is my daughter. Therefore, he must have preferential treatment. No, your son can be wrong. Your daughter can be wrong. Praise the Lord. So please let us have open mind because we're talking of the church of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. We must seek the truth. Let us seek the truth at all times. Let's look at Job chapter 34. The truth. When it is the truth, we can't go wrong. When it is the truth, it will be very helpful. Amen. He said, let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. Job chapter 34, verse 4. Job chapter 34, verse 4. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. What is good based on the word of God. The good and perfect acceptable will of God. That's what we're talking about. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Glory be to the name of the Lord. The Bible says, prove all things. Do what? Prove all that means when we hear things, let's check it out. When we hear, somebody can say something. That doesn't mean the person is lying. That is he's saying what he's saying based on his understanding. That's what he understands. Let's check. If we check, we'll be able to find out where the truth lies. Amen. Prove all things. Hold fast, which one? That which is good. Praise the Lord. Prove all things. Glory be to God. Now, as mentors and leaders, we must be showing examples. As mentors and leaders, we must be showing example. We must be willing to mentor. We must be willing, we must, we must enlarge our capacity to have people, you know, have access to us. We can't say we're too busy, we don't have time for people. We must have time. Praise the Lord. Because it's our responsibility to help them. It's our responsibility to ensure that they grow and they advance as they ought to. So parents, please, leaders in this church, don't be too busy that you avoid our children. You don't have time for them. Make sure you have time for them. They come, attend to them. Guide them in the right way. Praise God. Guide them where? In the right way. Listen to them. Listen to them. If you're busy and you can't listen to them at that point, let them know. And make time for them. Make time. Make appointment. 
see me at so so time and sit down with them, listen to them, and also be discreet. It's not everybody, it's not anything somebody or every somebody, it's not even whatever they tell you, it's not your the response to go and be discussing with somebody else. <laughs> Can you imagine what is going on? What is going on? <laughs> if you see what this boy said, ah, that's not how you, it is between you and that child. Praise the Lord. Mentor them, pray with them. Let them have confidence that they have a confidant. Praise the Lord. Don't let them talk to you and then they be afraid that their father has had what they told you. That's wrong. But correct them properly. Pray with them. Tell them. Praise God. Amen. But if certain issues in their lives continue, then you may have to raise it with some other person. But let them know. That since I've been doing this and this is what I, I, I need to raise it so that we can deal with this matter. Praise the Lord. Because what is important is their spiritual growth. Amen. Glory be to the name of the Lord. And very, very important in our mentoring and leading role is that we must live what we preach. We destroy our credibility if we're saying some things and they are not saying it in our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. Particularly, you are the leaders of this church. Please preach as you are preaching. Believe what you preach. Because otherwise, you destroy your ministry. You destroy it. Because people say, what is he talking about? Okay, he goes there. He says these things. But look at what he's doing. So in the end, they will not receive. And if they don't receive, you're not helping anybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's our responsibility. One of the, I believe that one of the ways God applies his wisdom to uh, mature us is to put us in the position of a limelight. Mm. So that you can now see yourself and say, ah, where you are, I can't be doing this. So that will correct some things you've been doing before. That's part of your own personal growth. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, for example, when you put on the T-shirt of the church, he writes Kingdom Lighthouse Church. I'm sure it will discipline you where you go. You can't just be at the gas station. You have the T-shirt. There is no other thing covering it. And you're the one arguing with the... Uh, you're shouting, everybody's seeing it, And they see Kingdom Lighthouse Church. I'm sure if you, if you wear it, I don't know about you, if you wear it, it instills discipline. So some of these things, God, I believe, is part of the wisdom of God. And as we grow and we are put in positions, uh, it helps us to clean ourselves more. Praise the Lord. So you must live what you preach. Don't just be a preacher of the word. Be a doer of the word. Be a person that lives in accordance with the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. And most importantly, we must pray. And that's what we're going to do now. Because if God told us that this is a year of controversy, and that word also addresses uh, contentions within the church, it is important for us to pray. Glory be to God to pray that none of us will be an agent of strife, none of us will be an agent of contention, that the Lord God Almighty will use us to build his church. Amen. And don't forget what I said. I'm not just saying it. Your church, the church is, it begins in your home. The church begins where? In your home. If there is strife in the home, the whole people in the house may not come to church. Is the church being built? Uh -huh. Praise God. If they come to church, you see it. You what? Ah, people try to hide, but you see, what do they call it? Body language, you know, body language. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
You can laugh, you can smile, but people know that this thing is fake. Is what? So let's reconcile. Let's do what? Let's reconcile. This is a year that we must determine not to allow any controversy among us. No controversy among us. Praise the Lord. We're brothers, we're sisters. Amen. Look at uh, John chapter 17. We're going to pray. And let us always pray. And if we see situations, let us pray. If we know of issues in families, let us pray. Glory be to God. Amen. And let us also be mindful of the schemes of the enemy. Because sometimes, you know, somebody comes along to help, it becomes an enemy. That's the scheme of the en enemy. To make your helper your enemy. So how then can you receive help? That's part of the schemes. Another scheme is that you will not be willing to talk to somebody that can help you. You want to be moving away from them. Let us avoid all that. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So look at John chapter 17. Praise the Lord. Uh, let me read from verse, uh, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one. How many? One. How many? One. That they all may be one. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That must be our goal. That must, that must be what we pray for. That must what, be what we work for. We must, we must work to be one. And the kind of thing that we spoke about this morning is to help us to be one. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to do exactly what you do. You're not going to do exactly what I do. But we must always work together for the progress of the church of God. Praise the Lord. Every one of us, we are accountable to him. We are accountable to him. He came, he died, that the church may come up. And one of the things we're going to be talking about this year, which he told me to teach, is uh, the cause of the substitutionary sacrifice. Why did God have to become man and die and take all that pain? When we know it and if we fill our hearts with it, we will know the importance of the church to him. And we will ensure that we are not, you know, instruments to create problems in the church. Praise the Lord. So let us rise up first of all. Glory be to God. We have differences. Differences arise because of our various backgrounds, because of our various ups, of, of, uh, upbringing, I tell people who want to marry, you are two different people. So that's an issue. But if you let God come in between, you can work together. Praise the Lord. Is my wife like me? Absolutely not. Am I like her? No. Praise God. But we have to work together. Do we have differences? Of course, yes. Amen. They are inborn. In the difference are inborn. It's the word of God that shapes and you know continues to, to unite us. Glory be to God. So the first thing that I want you to do is to take one minute, just one minute to reflect before you pray. Because we must go forward beginning with forgiveness. Whoever may have done anything against you, 
whether it's your husband, whether it's your wife, whether it's another brother, another sister, whatever it is, the first thing is we must first of all forgive. Because if you don't forgive, there is no foundation on which to build. The first thing is forgiveness. So take one moment to reflect so that you can truly let the word of God soak your heart to forgive. Praise the Lord. If you don't forgive, you cannot you, you cannot avoid, you, cannot, you can't say, if you avoid, you are not avoiding controversy. I'm just going to avoid them. No, you just have to forgive and come together. So let us pray and ask God, amen, grace to forgive and tell God, this person, I forgive this person. There is a minister of God. Prince, uh, uh, Derek, Derek Prince, who said it is like this. Somebody owes you $30,000. It's an IOU. And you are bent on collecting that IOU. And you owe God $1 million. And God said, you see, if you forgive this person that IOU of $30,000, I will forgive you your IOU of $1 million. But if you want to hold on to that $30,000, no problem. Uh, you, you have to pay this $1 million. Now, which one is better? To pay $1 million or to forgive $30,000? So that's why you have to forgive. Because when you forgive, you have, you, have, you have more, you know, you gain from God. So let us pray. Let us take time. Please pray. This is cleansing. We have to begin this year like this. You have first of all to cleanse ourselves. Who is it that you have ought against? Who is it that has done something that has been in your heart? Children, please pray. Forgive. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. Men and women, you have to forgive. Husbands and wives, you have to forgive. Friends, you have to forgive. Enemies, you have to forgive. As long as you are a believer, you have to forgive. Lord, I forgive in the name of Jesus. When you forgive, amen, then God fights your battle against those who are battling you. Because you are forgiving everything, then you transfer the thing into the hand of God. Praise the Lord. So please, Lord, I forgive in the name of Jesus. And you must genuinely forgive. Forgive now five minutes. An issue has come up again, and it's another issue. No, you have to forgive. Not only forgive now, you have to walk in forgiveness. You said 40, you said 490, 70 times 7. And that means unlimited. So it doesn't matter how many times you are offended. You have to forgive. It doesn't matter what has been done. You have to forgive. Oh, what has done against me, I can't take it. What you have done against Jesus Christ, he died for it. So that you can, can have a life. Have you died yet for whatever has been done against you? So, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I forgive this person, whoever they are, please forgive them. Please forgive them. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. Thank you for the foundation you are laying. We exalt your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us now pray that God will fill us with the wisdom he has shared with us this morning, because that is wisdom, so that there will be no controversy among us. Fill us with this wisdom, that we walk in this wisdom so that there will be no controversy in our homes, no controversy in the church, no controversy whatsoever, that we will be truly one and walk together in love and in peace. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we bless your name, we give you all the praise, O oh Lord. We decree today that every controversy is settled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that there are no controversies because as we walk in love, Lord, there will be no controversy. As we walk as one, there will be no controversy. Because all things, Lord God, will be seen from your point of view. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that each and every one of us standing before you, our Father will be agents of love, agents to build, agents, O oh Lord God Almighty, to work together with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That we will be workers together with you, that what you are building, Lord, we will not attack. 
what we are, you are building, we will not, oh Lord, bring down in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You must resolve to be a builder. And you have to pray to be a builder. To be a builder, to be a builder means that when the pain is there, you still continue to build. Praise the Lord. You don't look at the pain and then address that and, and create problems. So, Lord, make me a builder. Use me to build in the name of Jesus Christ. By counseling, by my conduct, by my speech, use me to build in the name of Jesus Christ. In leading and in mentoring, use me to build in the name of Jesus Christ. In my home, use me to build. Where I walk, use me to build. In this church, use me to build in the name of Jesus Christ. Let my ministration be a ministration that will build the kingdom and will build up others in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give me grace to have time for them. Give me grace, O oh Lord God, to know what to say, how to say it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Use me to build in the name of Jesus Christ. Make me a builder. Let me be a worker together with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help me, Lord God, to be your vessel, your, your, your instrument to build in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the counsel that comes to my mouth be your counsel in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be your counsel that I will say what you want me to say, that I will do what you want me to do for the purpose, O Lord God Almighty, of uh, bringing peace among your people and making progress and all that you desire among them in the name of Jesus Christ. Use me, O oh Lord, to build in my home, to build in the church, in every place that I will be a builder together with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the reasons we address this is that if we are perfectly aligned, praise the Lord, then we avoid the controversy that God will have with the church because we'll be in his perfect will. Amen. Because he's going to have controversy with his church. Praise the Lord. Because he says judgment always begins in the house of God. That's the way he does it. And we're going to be seeing that this year all over. Praise the Lord. So that's what we're avoiding by doing this. We're avoiding it. We're in his. We're aligned to him. And then we avoid all that thing. Praise the Lord. So let us pray that Lord throughout this year, let us align perfectly with you, that we may avoid the controversy you have with the people in the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord God Almighty, we may avoid your judgment. Grant us grace to be perfectly aligned with you. Instruct us always and give us the heart that will obey your voice in the name of Jesus Christ to do what you want us to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh Lord God, to be united with your will in Jesus' name, to draw closer to you, to desire only what you desire for our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is what we ask, O oh Lord, because we don't want to, uh, 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 to, to taste your judgment. We want to walk in your blessings. We worship you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord God Almighty will continue to preserve you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain in his in his sight, remain in his will. Amen. Glory be to God. Be united with him. Part of the things that they, they taught us in the Sunday school is that, you know, when he called them, they went with him. They were never anywhere else. They always listened to him. They always did what he wanted them to do. That is how to avoid what will happen this year. A number of things will happen. Glory be to God. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as he preserved us from corona, he will preserve us com completely in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not even see a trace of it in the name of Jesus Christ. But we'll be walking in his blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will fight for you. God will not fight against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I say God will fight for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God will not fight against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything we need that will be in his will so that he will not fight against us. We receive grace to have them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will walk in humility in the name of Jesus Christ. We will be humble. We will be polite. We will love. 
we will accommodate. We will, you know, we will be helpful in the name of Jesus Christ. We will make the necessary sacrifice that we need to make in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be selfish and greedy in the name of Jesus Christ, but we will walk in his will. And he will give us grace to see things the way that he sees them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are grateful to you. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for what you are addressing this very first Sunday of the year. It is fundamental because before we talk of others, we must get it right. Thank you, Lord Almighty, for laying this foundation for us. We are grateful to you, Lord, that by the wisdom you have released to us this morning, controversy is banished from among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be no strife. There shall be no argument. There shall be no contention. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will be perfectly united in the love of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we will truly be one that the world may know that you have sent the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, you said, let brotherly love continue. Father, brotherly love will continue among us. In the name of Jesus Christ, capacity to love ourselves, O oh Lord, one another, the way you love us, release unto us. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I ask again the capacity, our Lord and our God, to love one another the way you love us, release unto us. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us. We need your help. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let our homes be peaceful. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let contention and strife be banished from our homes. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let love permeate all the environment and everything in the name of Jesus Christ. You said the love of God is said abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Lord, let the love of God fill our hearts by the work of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us walk with you. Let us go forward with you. Father, I pray for the leaders of this church. Grace to fully represent you as the auto release in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and our God, everything that the enemy wants to use to mock you in their lives. Let them be banished forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray my Lord and my God for sensitivity to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And perfect obedience to the word of the Holy Spirit. Lord you know us individually. Help us in Jesus name. Our Lord and our God we have resolved to work with you. What we need to do what has to be done. Oh Lord release unto us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord we thank you. We bless your holy name. We give you all the praise. We thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands grab for Jesus.